So we're back. Back from SEMA. I don't know. That was a trip. That was a long trip. <laughs> I'm glad it's over. I had fun, but I'm glad it's over. <laughs> it was very intense leading up to it. So it made uh, the trip there just, ah, but still a little nerve wracking. Maybe, ah, uh, for you, you got to fly. I had to drive <laughs> all the way across the country. Right. Speaking of driving, let's talk Speaking about... Speaking of driving. Let's talk about International Radical Rod build-off, drive-off. Yep. So, as most of you know, if you've been following along the channel for a while, you know that we initially had the whole plan of everybody on the Radical build-off meeting in Nebraska and then driving from Nebraska to SEMA. So we were really excited and looking forward to that to begin with and everything. Right, right. 1,400 miles, caravanning with a bunch of other builds that were all built within the same year. They also said that they were inviting all of those who had running and driving vehicles from 2020 that didn't get to go to SEMA. That Since still, there was no SEMA they, because of COVID. Right. Then they were, if their sponsors had said, okay, we're not doing SEMA in 2021, or excuse me, in 2020, but you're invited for 21 because we still had your spot for you then they were all going to be so it was going to be twice the caravan as normal yeah we were expecting a huge turnout in 19 i think they had 15 to 20 somewhere in that neighborhood i can't remember 19 something like that running up down the road all at the same time so it should have been a really fun really exciting thing for us to be a part of and also video and get you guys some good content for it yeah we were but, really looking forward to all of that and really crunching to get this done on time but a couple of weeks before we were supposed to be leaving for uh for nebraska we got a phone call from the head guy of the international radical rod build off drive off and he was like so how's the bill going are you guys you know looking to go on time and we're like yeah we're pushing we're staying up late but we're hammering it through you're getting all the parts you need well yeah stuff's on back order but they're pro making promises we're gonna get it and your sponsors are going to be there. Yep, our sponsors are, are still, they said they've got their hotel room booked and they're looking forward to meeting us in person where all the systems go. And he said, oh, right, right on. Well, congratulations. You guys just won International Radical Rod Drive Off. <laughs> and he went on to say that uh, nobody else... Um, had been able to do all of that. <laughs> the, Everybody had a reason or another that it just didn't work out for them, whether it they weren't able to complete their build or whether their um, person that they're featuring their car was backed out of SEMA now for some reason or another, or... Yeah, it just, was an international competition and no international people were guaranteed them. to be able to come into the United States with all the quarantines and the border... Break. It was just, yeah, it just wasn't working out lots of reasons for lots of different people so you just <clears throat> bottom line is we were the only ones left that were actually planning on still going to Nebraska <laughs> <laughs> right yeah so uh, last man standing but you know that's actually you know I feel like that's a pretty good accomplishment considering no one else was able to do that but then he I, went, he I went. on the other hand feel kind of disappointed because you know as a builder I want to be able to you know, compete against someone else that's actually built something and something else that's there. And yeah. I, I personally don't feel the same as she does. I kind of feel, you know, feel bad about the whole situation, you know, for the other people that were actually trying hard and going to get some stuff done. And, and for me, it doesn't really feel like a win. It feels like I beat up a 12 year old and then want to go brag about it or something because I mean, there was, it no, is one, what it is. There was no one else there to compete with. Right. So. So then Brian was like, hey, so you guys going to still uh, make that drive from Nebraska? And we're like, uh, do we have to? And he said, well, I'm not going to be. So there was no point at that point of us driving by ourselves from Nebraska to Las and, Vegas. And at this point, the people that had finished cars in 2020, also yeah. there was only two of those left now that were actually going to end up being at SEMA and they were planning on trailering theirs as well at this point. So. Yeah, they had all said that they were going to trailer. Uh, their sponsors were still counting on them being there, but uh, but from their distance and the timeline and since there wasn't any other drive, they just were going to trailer it. So, well, if we could trailer it, then that gives us just that much, a little bit more time to get this finished. Plus, we don't have all that road grime of having to clean up right, you know, on show day and 
all of that kind of stuff and it really put a lot of pressure off of our backs although we, still only two gave weeks. Us some, <laughs> yeah they gave us a little bit more time to maybe try to concentrate on doing a few other little odds and end things that would actually make the truck appear better and not necessarily have to be as road worthy but that kind of backfired on us a little bit there because left about a week there to be able to dial it all in and still have time to get you know parts and pieces to make it run and everything and we did that and then we had all those problems with the fuel fittings and brake lines and all kinds of stuff which we told you guys about in the past video yeah we'll go back to some showing you some of that but yeah even the radiator was leaking the fuel lines were leaking um and i think you know we saw that we got it running but the idle wouldn't settle down it wasn't running nice it wasn't running the way we were hoping it would be running it was actually wanting to stay idling at like 2500 rpms or thereabouts and of course we got a 2500 stall in there so if it was in gear at that point it was ready to go and uh with the leaking brake scenario we didn't have much for brake pedal so it was really kind of a sketchy situation it was really scary so we're like okay well you know we'll trailer it we'll have to just trailer it into SEMA. we'll see what we can figure out so the whole drive to vegas he's like googling figuring out what it needs to get that thing to settle down so we get to vegas and at that point i had figured out that i needed a boost reference for the throttle bodies to make that work and um i went to try to find some stuff we ended up showing up to vegas on saturday about two o'clock and we didn't have checking to... in at one o'clock on sunday mind you so <laughs> plenty early enough there as far as all that goes but I figured well surely we can find a fitting in Las Vegas. I mean it's a huge town with lots of places to be able to buy parts. No Hutchinson. <laughs> it's not Hutchinson, Kansas. So yeah I went and went all over with all over uh, Vegas trying to find that fitting and that was not happening on a Saturday and we ended up having to push it off the trailer at SEMA because I didn't want to take any chances of this thing tearing off cross country and wiping out a you know million dollar Lambo sitting over there with who knows what done to it and all that <laughs> yeah, sort of smashing stuff. Smashing so, into the new convention center or something crazy. <laughs> yeah or I mean even something worse you know it just really honestly was a safety issue. I mean I could have actually ran over a person too well, you know. For sure, so. for sure. But anyways didn't didn't have the best spot because of that because we actually pushed it off the trailer so they were like so, oh you can push it off over here and yeah so that that kind of it is what it is but you know also it's the first time we were at SEMA but we had a vehicle at SEMA and I think that's a that's an important accomplishment so I don't I don't think you need to sell yourself too short on that I still feel I still feel let down on it I don't feel I don't feel as happy about it as I'd like to how about that I mean I'm just Kind of feel crappy about the whole deal so yeah but still it sat there at SEMA we had mm. lots of fans come up to us and and people you guys who've been following along we got to meet you face to face yeah loved doing that that was so much fun to just randomly run into people in the halls of SEMA or you know out, out, out around the build really enjoyed talking to everybody that we did you know that was that was great yeah so. yeah yeah so there were some people who did find us over in our little corner of, of South Hall <laughs> and honestly I mean we didn't spend a lot of time with the truck because you're not technically supposed to do that with you know displaying right, right. a vehicle at SEMA yeah they said but, not to but every time we were there there was people around it just constantly all the time and and it's stuffed in a corner. I mean, there's, you know, pretty cool that people are still finding that and there was always somebody there looking at it. So yeah, it was really fun to be running into the subscribers um, randomly in the hallways or around the build. Um, it was really sweet for us. It's the first time we've had an opportunity to do that because this is the first event really that we've been able to take anything to and be a part of. So um, that was a really fun thing for us. I think it was also cool to, you know, actually be able to see people that don't know anything about the truck yet, kind of their reaction and stuff as well. I mean, you guys have been following along, so you kind of know what's been going on and how it came to be, but a lot of other people, you know, didn't, of course, and they would walk up to the truck and look at it, and I heard, uh, I heard one old guy trying to tell another guy that they actually made 
a bed like that for delivering fuel to some of the gas stations or something. Maybe and they did. <laughs> I'm not aware of anybody having a bed like that in the past. So <laughs> I thought I was being unique with the design. Maybe you guys can tell me I'm wrong. But anyways, I thought that was kind of a fun little thing that we had come up that he thought might be it was an original you know, deal. And I only had uh, one person call me out on the signs being something that weren't original, so that yeah, was pretty yeah, cool. There was one guy who said, yeah, I know the signs are fake, but you did a really good job on them kind of a thing. And but everybody the, else totally thought they were real. Yeah, and there was an older guy that had a towing company for many a years that he walked up there and thought the boom was real, and everybody that looked at the boom thought it was real i mean it's not a common thing for a lot of people to see and know about so it's yeah, everybody fine but, thought that that was factory but no one knew that the the boom wasn't real so or wasn't an original old piece so that's pretty cool to yeah, just kind of see how that all plays out yeah yep yeah, that was fun and and it was also fun to be a part of battle of the builders because you know international radical rod didn't pan out the way that you were hoping it would so i went ahead and entered us into the Battle of the Builders, and there's four categories. I did not know she was doing this, by the way. <laughs> That's right. I got an email from them confirming our spot, and they said that if, you know, if we wanted to, we could enter into the Battle of Builders. There's a bunch of criteria you had to meet. Um, builder had to be, you know, one guy uh, doing over 51%, which obviously he's done well over 51%. Other things like that. So I went ahead and and entered it. There's four categories though. There's a foreign car, truck, hot rod, or uh, young guns, which I think is 27 years and younger. I missed that one by a couple days. <laughs> yeah, whatever. And so I didn't know if this was a truck or a hot rod. And then I was thinking in my mind, when I'm in SEMA's past, trucks are those big lifted. I'm sure you guys have seen the SEMA videos with the big lifted trucks and they're all pretty show and shine with Bluetooth drive shafts and all that kind of fun <laughs> stuff, whatever. Anyway, um, that was what I was thinking and that's not that. So I put us in the hot rod and as it really kind of works out, I should have put us left us in the truck because it is a tow truck. And the hot rods were the pretty show and shine, nice, you know, do scoops. <laughs> stuff in that stuff. stuff in those categories. I mean, even the trucks, I mean, they're there's a lot of work that goes into a lot of these trucks, and some of them have been yeah. stuff that has been worked on for years and years. Right, right. So yeah, there's several vehicles there that had been worked on for many years before they got to the point of entering it in a SEMA. However, I, I don't personally feel like, uh, although I, I do take great pride in this truck and what we've got going on here so far, I don't feel like it's of that caliber where it was really should have been even put in there but he feels that way but we made it all the way to the third round and the third round is was the top 40 which is actually just the top 10 in each category and as soon as we found out you know i mean i thought it was going to be the top 40 in each category but as soon as they made the announcement that it was the that they were announcing the top 10 in each category i'm like well i know we're not in that because <laughs> it's a good build and it's solid and you meet the criteria and all that but uh but it's not top 10, not, not for those people who spent like a thousand hours on the paint alone, which not hating, that's, you know, legit. They're beautiful, beautiful it, cars. That, and that deserves attention for sure over definitely. a rat rod. So, you know, it is what it is. But yeah, we didn't make it that far, but we did, you did make it all the way up to that point, which I think is pretty damn good. <laughs> Whatever. Anyways, yeah, so tried our own hand at doing some interviews for some other people and some other builds, which uh, we've got one of those videos already posted. Put you guys a link to that up here. You guys can go check it out. And we've got a, another, another one, one coming. coming pretty quick. Yeah. So Finishing um, that one up on the editing and that'll yeah. be done. And We've got a bunch more other video of SEMA too. We're going to have a whole nother video of just SEMA and yeah, show kind of basically what it is and what all is there and what And all expect. the eye candy and what all we checked out and some yeah. of the fun things you could do at SEMA and that kind of thing, which we didn't actually get to do that many fun things because um, oh, you're getting attacked by fly. <laughs> uh, we didn't get to do that many fun things because we were hauling through all the halls, checking out, talking to uh, future sponsors, hopefully. 
Um, and and just learning things and um, making connections and stuff like that. I mean, that's the whole purpose of SEMA, you know, at its true soul is to be able to make those connections and stuff. So. Yeah, SEMA stands for Specialty Equipment Marketing Association, and it's for all the aftermarket parts, tools, pieces, stuff that you can do, um, and and builds of of makes and models of any year, any any type from off road razors, four wheel drive. It's the one event where all cars are welcome from race cars and top fuel funny cars to rat rods um to motorcycles so yep. um it's it's intense um there's a lot to look at it bothered me <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot to look at um by SEMA standards and from past years, it was a lot smaller. And maybe you guys have seen some other videos where people are talking about that. Not nearly as many vendors as been in the past, not nearly as many people going around, you know, the crowd sizes were smaller. But for any other trade show or card show, it was huge. And I mean, so it's still an honor to be a part of it. It's still really exciting to be there. To put it kind of in perspective for anybody that hasn't been there, um, we pretty much walked every aisle that there is and we tried to see everything that was there so we could you know have a good grasp on everything that's going on and we put real close to 50 miles in in those four days my four shoes my four feet <laughs> anyways back to hookers and blow and back to the whole thing we kind of did that throughout the week and i did get a fitting um found on monday and got a line on there and it's not really supposed to be running vehicles or anything there and I definitely was kind of scared to run mine so kind of waited until Friday when everybody was rolling out doing the cruise on yeah, Friday. SEMA ignited. Um, SEMA ends at 4 o'clock on Friday and from 4 to 11 starts SEMA ignited which everybody who has a running and driving vehicle that was a feature vehicle you took the sticker off. Yep. You should have left that. Too late. Where is it? Did it's, you throw it away? Yeah. Oh, you're breaking my heart. <laughs> Seriously. Off the video, I just now looked over there and saw it was gone. You totally needed to have left that for a minute. So we could shoot more content around it being there. Maybe even the first car show so it would be there and people would be like, oh, that's SEMA. Why? Why wouldn't you say that? Why would you think to pull that off of there? Because I started looking at the show on the <laughs> truck. <laughs> you, you, you pulled off all the fun stickers. What the hell is wrong with you? I want that shit on my truck. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to cut that out, but you just hurt me. That was like a shot to the gut. So yeah, anyway. <laughs> So anybody who had a feature vehicle can uh, drive it in, in the parade, and the parade route goes quite a long ways with um, blocks up, and you, you drive it probably about a mile or a little over, and then it ends at this big uh, grandstand where pe where the general it's public... A parking lot party is where it ends. Yeah, it's a parking lot, but they've got grandstands up. It's um, for the first time ever, SEMA decided that on Friday the general public could go in normally SEMA is only open to those who are in the indus, auto, automotive industry but um, anybody could come in that bought tickets that sold tickets to the general public and uh, come in SEMA and see SEMA Ignited where they had top full funny cars they had drift cars they had all kinds of fun stuff to see after the parade when everybody started getting kind of cleared out away from us a little bit then I went ahead and started playing with the truck a little and kind of got it dialed in at least to the point where it was idling a little more reasonably. I think we got it down to around a thousand RPM or so. So still a little faster than what it should be, but at least not trying to run away, you know. Brakes were thing. working. So we decided we would go ahead and do the cruise.
excited that he decided to do the cruise. But, you know, for any of you guys who are car guys, think about that. You build a motor. Whole truck. Build the whole truck. And the first time ever you're going to actually drive it is in front of a whole bunch, like every car fanatic person you can imagine <laughs> <laughs> looking at you, videoing you, taking out. a picture, have the cell phone out. Waiting Every, for you to screw up. Uh, wait, yeah, for the entire parade route. It was intensely crazy, but a lot of fun. But he was stressing out. And we didn't overheat. Yeah, that's, I kept asking her, what's the temperature? You know, what's this? What's that? What's the temperature? Because he's holding the handheld the whole time, you and, know. And, and I'm watching all the, you know, what the RPMs are, what the tip is. I'm watching all the, all the things. And I should say, <clears throat> when we started it, here in the shop before we left, we had put just a couple of gallons of gas in the tank just to run through and listen and well, dial it in. Plus, we had like five gallons in there to begin with, and we started leaking oh, yeah, everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So, the, we didn't the, want a whole bunch of gas in there. <laughs> That's right. We put five gallons in. So, we in. knew that we had no leaks anymore. Right. And so, yeah, low fuel just to play with it. And then we played with it for hours trying to figure out how to get it to be not 2,500 RPM. So, it was revving at 2,500, you know. Anyway. We get to play again for a couple hours before we did the parade. So while we were on the parade, right as we get to the grandstands for everybody, the thing starts running out of gas. <laughs> like four or five you know vehicles that were broken down in the parade lane and everything and we didn't want to be that guy especially right in the middle of you know the right whole stadium the, area the stadium have. at the end of the drive yeah afterwards you know we we were parked and I, I was telling a guy that was parked next to us you know a little parking area just for the for the feature vehicles and I was telling guys like I think we are out of gas parked right here and I said, and I'm so glad we made it to here and not out there. And he's like, oh, the first car died 20 minutes into the show. It was a Mustang. It overheated. We had to push it out of the way. No big deal. It would have been fine. We'd seen it all through the whole parade. We just didn't want it to be that guy. <laughs> You've probably seen that on YouTube now, I'm sure, at this point. You know? Bronco. And then there's a Bronco <laughs> that bursts into flames while it's trying to make it. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. Hey, fire, 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 fire. Thank you for that not being us. <laughs> it so, could have been so much worse. Yeah. But we made it. We and then it. Um, our buddy Ty that actually went out there with us to uh, Vegas and helped, you know, take care of everything when we were there and everything. He uh, went and got some fuel and handed it over the fence and we got it fueled back up. So when everything was all done, we decided that, uh, you know, hey, it was doing good enough, you know, let's go ahead and just drive it back to the Airbnb that we were staying at. And uh, we went ahead and drove down the strip. Fun around Vegas a little bit so that was kind of cool very fun to drive hookers and blow down down Las Vegas strip and still see pretty everything. nerve wracking because it's still Vegas with a million people everywhere and yeah lots of people looking and but now we're not in the car fanatics and car people now we're just general public on the Las Vegas strip on a Friday night it was so much fun I loved it it was, it was great time. and and it made it and it made it back to where we were staying and and whew, 
Yeah, it was, it was good times. So that pretty well catches you guys up on what we did at SEMA and how that all went. We got video all week long, so I've got a ton of stuff to go through and try to edit for you guys and everything. So forgive me for not having it done yet. So look forward to the next couple of weeks. We're going to do more videos of the people we videoed because uh, we did do a couple of interviews and some people interviewed yep. us. That'll be coming. Um, other things around SEMA and more content with Hookers and Blow is coming. Anyways, yeah. I guess that's about all we got for you guys on this video, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.